Seriously, I am positive that Ross from Friends and Agent Mulder are actually the same person, but that doesn't have anything to do with anything. This is Dungeon Souls. We're throwing chairs at it. It's by Lamina Studios and Mike Studios, done on Game Maker Studio. I said studio a lot. I'm, I'm done with it. Dungeon, what is it? Dungeon Souls is an action adventure roguelike dungeon crawler which draws heavily for ins that draws heavy inspiration from Nuclear's Throne, Risk of Rain, and Overture. Explore vast procedurally generated dungeons, collect loots, and slay hordes of challenging en enemies. You can pick it up for around twelve to thirteen dollar or thirteen to fourteen dollars of your local wealth currency. Maybe, maybe you exchange buckets of fish. I don't know. Devs did send us some keys. Thanks on them for that. So let's kick off the chairquisition. One chair means that it's garbage. Two chairs means that it's... Uh, three chairs means that it's pretty good. And four chairs means that I can't stop. Please change my pants. Please, I, I, I need more of it. Uh, we also got our categories of doom mixed with the working, shiny sounds, controls, and fun. So let us kick this off. Then the Dungeon Souls make with the working. Technically, Brad, yes, um, it did. It absolutely did. Did and in its own special way over here on the Humbuntu 1604 980 powered UHD displayed with a little 980 sauce thrown in the mix to keep things interesting. It technically made with a working, however, when I say technically, um, it likes to start off in this little postage stamp size lower left hand corner scream up, god damn it, really, every time. It's very annoying. Um, it's impossible to decode at UHD because 320 at, you know, 3840 by 2160, you change it to 1080p, you can kind of decipher some of the moon glyphs. I, you know, I, I effectively had to face fuck my own monitor in order to read that business. And, um, you know, forget about even doing this in big picture mode because uh, I, I tried it on the little steam box and I was like, oh, let's walk halfway across the living room, get down there. And I was like... You switch it to full screen, you switch it back, but does it every single fucking time. How does it run? Outside of that, the game is very performant, but, you know, then again, you're, you're dealing with that resolution um, scaled to 1080 or UHD. So I'm going to give you two chairs out of that on the box of business. The tiny screen, man. It's real. I had to, I had to full on Mr. Magoo, my monitor. On the on the bottom left hand side, Sandy was there for that. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And because we'll we'll talk about it a little more in the control section, but unless you have a specific type of controller plugged in, uh, you cannot input anything into the game. So uh, that, that that was fun. We got the resolution issue fixed, but at least it remembers your settings. I don't know what's going on with Ben's system because when I booted it up, it remembered to stay in like windowed mode at like a reasonable resolution. So that's definitely a thing. On Fedora 24, 64-bit with the i7-6700K, GTX 980, it gets about three chairs. Yeah, now uh, over here with the FX8370E and the GTX 1080, I, yeah, no, exactly the same issue. If I started the game full screen, it renders in 320 by 240, a teeny tiny window on the uh, bottom left corner of the screen. It kind of reminded me of Serpent in the Staglands. Mm -hmm. uh, the ga that game did the exact same thing. Uh, I managed to work around it by set a, disabling uh, full screen in game and using KWIN to force it to full screen to 1080p. So it gets three chairs. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that is two chairs for mix with the working up next is the shiny and the sounds then how did it shine how did it sound the pixels did they did they massage your eyes no they did not remember how owl boy um did everything right with its hipster pixel mechanics aesthetics and sounds and all that mm. well this is bizarro owl boy wait you know that's kind of insulting to bizarro this looks like um every other hipster pixel hot mess currently out on steam and i'm really glad they're gonna get rid of green light and you know just pay for play straight up like that. Hell, it's even worse than most. I'm reminded um, about that really bad Sonic the Hedgehog thing or um, Serpent the Freedom Stagnant. Planet. Yeah, <laughs> it's just a hot mess of pixel. Nope. I mean, even after disabling some of the effects like Screen Shake and some of the extra text BS stuff, I mean, it's still pixel soup. You don't really know what the fuck all's going on on my little 28-inch monitor. Um, I didn't really even bother to check if I had sound because I... For whatever reason, on the, you know, 1604 box, it never remembered the settings for my mothering resolution. So every time I had to play it, when I had a chance to play it, I had to stop what I'm doing, get here, and, you know, 
all up in the monitor and reset that. It's pretty fuggly. And again, I didn't even bother with the sounds because I was so irritated with that. And that had a lot to do with it, having to deal with that little bit of a QA that kind of got passed along. Won't you? Yeah, I mean, I mean, Pidger thinks the 320 by 240 window at 1080p is bad. Mm. It's really going to get a 4K <laughs> monitor because that, that, is, that is beyond postage stamp. That is, that is some micro dot level shit. Um, but yeah, it gets really crowded at, at, in, on, on the screen, like really, really quickly. Because they're, they're, uh, at least if you're playing the Necromancer, you mow through enemies really, really quickly. And once that's done, they drop a ton of loot that eventually the game can't even process. And it's just like this white <laughs> blotch in the, in strewn throughout the room that's the various items. And they like to cover all the traps too. So when you go to collect it, oh, what? No, the trap triggered. And now I'm, I'm dead because I got killed by an Indiana Jones boulder. The pixel art isn't really anything to write home about. It's pretty bare bones. It gets the job done, but that's about as far as it goes. And I guess there is a soundtrack. I did hear some music, but nothing that really stuck with me. So it gets two chows. Yeah, I heard some music and it got muted about five minutes in, as usual. Uh, yeah, no, I did. I was not a big fan with the background music. The sounds, well, they reminded me a lot of uh, Legend of Dungeon, some game we threw chairs a while back. Uh, the big thing that struck out at me was um, it renders in 4x3. It's not 16.9. So even if you're setting that window to full screen, it's only 4x3. So it's like, really? It's 2017 already. Come on. And like Jordan already said, it gets really, really cluttered really, really fast. I mean, there are spike traps on the ground. You don't see them half the time. But I'll get to that in a moment. So for the shiny and the sounds, it gets two chairs because it technically works. Well, that is one big fat chair for shiny and sounds. Up next is the control. Then how did, how did, how did it do? I'm um, amazing, brilliantly, and uh, that's a damn lie. I, I really like when you have this game in big picture mode. It just screams. It's like, this game needs a keyboard warning. And I was like, okay, whatever. This game needs a keyboard. I was like, shut up, big picture mode. I'm going to play it. Because have you ever tried to play this pile of nope with a keyboard? It's rubbish. <laughs> it didn't work. Rubbish, right. I think there is an option to disable controller input in order to play it with the keyboard in trouble i don't know i just saw that in there is like that, that's just a cascading um fail of nope not that the controller is any better and apparently this thing only works with the xbox controller i use the x clone controller which fell off the back of a bus doesn't have any of the official xbox markings on it but it at least allowed me to play it and yeah that's also rubbish it's a bit of nope. It's a bit of nightmare fuel. It is, however, technically playable, so I can't give it one. But talk about tightening up controls. It's very hard to come off a game like Owlboy like we did last week. It was like, oh, this is so fucking amazing. This is just done right. This is like Lana Spray and Pray is the best thing I can say for it. So you're getting two. Yeah, spray and pray is about what you can is the best you can hope for when it comes to aiming. And the the aiming does this weird thing too, where if you move the reticule, it'll move the camera along with it, which I guess kind of makes sense if it's playing dual ro roles, but it's still really really awkward when you're the center of your screen is not actually the center of your screen, especially when you're trying to do like shoot twin stick shooter things like dodge enemies and stay out of pit traps and not trigger the boulder traps or the bombs or anything like that. And yeah, mm -hmm. Don't try and play this with anything other than a 360 controller because shit will not work. I was a bit shocked because I tried with the DualShock controller. I tried with the keyboard. Nothing. Oh, and Sandy's like, oh, it's working for me. I'm like, oh, he has an, he has an F310. That's probably an X input mode. Let me go grab an Xbox controller low and behold, it works. I'm not particularly impressed with it. The, the controls do work. You can, you can play the game. It's perfectly playable. But all that gets you is two chairs. Yeah, no, Steam Controller, you know, the one that Valve actually designed, produced. Never yeah. heard of it. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. The only way you can get it to work if you, is if you set it to emulate mouse and keyboard. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Now, the Logitech F310, like Jordan already mentioned, that does work. If you set it to X input mode, it just works out of the box. Uh, so, yeah, no, for controls, it gets two chairs. 
two chairs for controls it is and finally fun ven it seems like you had a blast you Man, tell us more about it was it. kind of amazing it was an enlightening experience and how not to make a fuck mothering game i'm guessing is what i'm getting into 70 plus minutes into this game and i don't really know what's going on and um you know i might have put more time into it if if i didn't have to break out the magnifying glass each time i launched the fucking thing then again I'm on this moon glyph operating system called 1604 LTS that 90% of fucking games are based on right now. Then again, I might not continue playing the game since, I mean, there's nothing this game does that has not been done better. It's like, okay, I, I get what you're going for. Now, you're really going to listen to this, though. I'm not, if you're the developer, don't, don't get all changry with me. This is not shovelware, you know. This is a valiant attempt at it's an attempt trying yes. to make a game. This is not, um, you know, some spam company just farting something out and hoping it sticks. No, 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 no. It's just kill, die, repeat. It's the dungeon. It's this, uh, we've seen this game a billion times. This game does nothing new, and everything that this game does has been done better. There's nothing to it. I mean, you get your character, you pick, you revive. Oh, look, collect some coins, buy some new shit. Da -da -da, then you get stomped again. Yeah. Um, how about less games like this? Because they're only going to get one chair. I mean, I, I don't think it's the worst thing in the world. Because, you know, running around and discriminately murdering things with arrows and magic can be fun. Uh, but, again, the problem arises where there's just too much shit on the screen and you die because of like some stupid shit that you could not have seen because all the enemies in the room died and the floor is completely obscured and all of a sudden you get murdered by spike traps it's fantastic uh i'd imagine actually uh if this game had some online co-op it would be really fun because mm -hmm. you can kill shit with your friends and i mean it was talk. fun listening to you and sandy play it at least. yeah no it, it, it's it's fun it was fun hanging out with sandy and playing this game but that's because it's hanging out with friends and talking shit yeah. um but it, I, I feel it would be kind of a hard sell for couch multiplayer because you got to get people in that room. And considering stuff like uh, Legend of Dungeon actually also has couch multiplayer and it's a better version of this game, they'll be like, well, why don't, why don't we just play that? And you probably will. I mean, the controls aren't fantastic either, as, as we discussed. It just there, there there are some good bits, but there's also a lot of wrong bits. I can't give it one cheer because I didn't absolutely hate it. So it, it gets to. Yeah, no, I absolutely hated it. Well, that's giving it away in one line, isn't it? It's not terrible. Oh, one chair. It's not Next. <laughs> it's not terrible, but it's not exactly good. They were trying to do something along the lines of Legend of Dungeon, like I mentioned earlier. It's basically nuclear throne with a heavier dose of medieval fantasy. It's the kind of game which, even though I usually suck at those kinds of games, I tend to enjoy them quite a lot. I've sunk over 30 hours into Enter the Gungeon. I've sunk 18 into Binding of Isaac, 27 in Risk of Rain. This is the kind of genre I will excuse the bullshit hipster pixels for the sake of the mechanics. But they managed to cock that up too. Not only are the controls less than ideal, ensuring you will never be able to truly enjoy the mechanics... As, you know, the developers themselves envisioned you would, there are mechanics and the RNG bullshit actively fighting one another all the goddamn time. The roguelike elements in this game can be summed up into permadeath and randomization. That's it. Uh, the two single most overdone, completely fucking boring elements of something that constitutes a quote-unquote roguelike. At least it didn't have crafting and survival. Uh, that, it does have is, crafting, though. That is kind though. of the definition of roguelike games. God damn it, you're right. It, does it have has crafting, crafting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Never mind. But in order uh, for a game with those elements to be enjoyable instead of, you know, nope-inducing, it needs to curb the randomness, especially when there are levels entirely randomly generated in a way that makes it almost impossible for you to progress. Namely, teeny tiny rooms with a seal in the middle that spawns a shit ton of enemies with spike traps all over the fucking place. It entered a gungeon, which is possibly the closest to this game I've experienced. I can reliably get to the fourth level of the dungeon. That's three bosses and three full levels that I've killed before I usually die. In Dungeon Souls, the only way I can even beat the first area, let alone the first boss, is an exercise in trial and error. Everything is so random, 
creatures will often get stuck on the random beats of uh, the random bits of scenery because their pathing AI just can't fucking deal with it. If the AI in your game can't fucking deal with it, what makes you think people will? One chair. See, see what see what I'm doing here. I'm I'm, I'm tightening up the controls. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> all right. Uh, that, that, that's that's one chair for finally tally all the, all that up, and we get one chair for Dungeon Souls. Final thoughts, gentlemen. Let's see. Chairs. Uh, oh man. Uh, yep. Yeah, uh, accurate chairs are accurate. <laughs> I mean, yeah. You know, ju- 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 justify no. it. Five hundred words or less. It's if you've looked at this game and you were curious to try it, don't bother. Get Legend uh, of Dungeon, Enter the Gungeon, or hell, even Force Showdown. Remember that? There's enough overlap between those three. Man, and I gotta be Souls. honest with you. I mean, you're doing like Force Showdown. I was like, this this makes Force Showdown look like a good game. Yeah, it makes it look really good by comparison, doesn't it? Yeah, you have absolutely no excuse to pick this one up. Nope. It's not awful. It's not great either. If it goes on sale for like a buck and you need something to fill out a party for people to laugh at and get shit faced at, maybe maybe this is a thing. But I, I, I don't know. It's I can't give it a solid recommendation. 